అందరికీ నమస్కారములు టుడే ఈజ్ అనదర్ గుడ్ డే ఫర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ అండ్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ ఏ వెరీ అడ్వాన్స్డ్ టాపిక్ ఇన్ సనాతన్ ధర్మ దట్ ఈస్ రీసెర్చ్ ఇన్ సనాతన ధర్మ వేరియస్ టాపిక్స్ లైక్ probably homam will also be touched upon uh, today csr prabhu garu will take over uh, other uh, speaker is not uh, available so it will be conducted by our uh, uh, csr prabhu garu we will start the session with vande uh, mataram by chala chitti babu garu and prarthana by kavali vishalakshya చలా చెట్టి బాబు గారు వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం సుజలా సుఫలా మలయజీతల సమలాతరం వందే మాతరం సుబ్రజ్యోస్నాపులకితీ ఉల్లకుసుమిత ద్రుమదళశోభి సుహాసి సుమధురభాషిణి సుఖదాంబరదాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం ధన్యవాదములండి చాలా చిట్టుబాబు గారు చావల్లి విశాలాక్షి గారు ప్లీజ్ డూ ప్రార్థన సర్వేభ్య నమస్కార లెట్ ఇస్ డూ మెడిటేషన్ ఫర్ అ మినిట్ సో జెంట్లీ క్లోజ్ యువర్ ఐస్ రిలాక్స్ యువర్ బాడీ అండ్ ఫోకస్ ఆన్ యువర్ బ్రెత్ గణానా గణపతి గుం హవామే కవిం కవీనాముపమ్రవస్తమ జ్యేష్ఠరాజ బ్రహ్మణ బ్రహ్మణస్పత ఆనశృన్మన్నోతి సీదసాదనం ఓ శ్రీ మహాగణాధిపత నమ ఓం ప్రణోదేవి సరస్వతీ వాజేర్వాజినీవతి దీనామవిత్రయవతు ఓం శ్రీ మహాసరస్వత్యై నమ గురురేవ గతిర్గురుమేవ భజే గురుణైవ సహాస్మి నమో గురవే న గురో పరమం శిశురస్మి గురో మతిరస్తి గురౌ పాహి గురో జ్ఞానందమయం దేవం నిర్మల స్ఫటికాకృతు ఆధారం సర్వ విద్యా హయగ్రీవముపాస్మహే శృతిస్మృతిపురాణం ఆలయం కరుణాలయం నమామి భగవత్పాదశంకరం లోకశంకరం శంకరం శంకరాచార్యం కేశవం బాదరాయణం సూత్రభాష్యకృతౌ వందే భగవంతౌ పునః పునః 
ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम असतो मा सदमया तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमया मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमया ओ शातिशातिशातिदेव भव पितृदेव भव आचार्य देव भव अतिथिदेव भव ओ सहनावत सह नौ भुन सह वीर कर्वा वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मा विषा वह ओ शाति 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 श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ धन्यवाद चावल विशालाक्षी गुरु नौ दट इज रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सी एस आर प्रभु गारू टेक ओवर द वेबिनार प्लीज okay friends we shall go into some of the details of the research perspectives of sanatan dharma the matter of fact remains that uh, the human civilization has existed for about more than 1 lakh years and uh, in this 1 lakh years which has uh, Uh, evolved on the banks of Saraswati River. The Saraswati River has been uh, rediscovered now, and it has been uh, revived. So, on the banks of Saraswati River, the rishis had their ashramas, like uh, Vishwamitra, Vasistha, and so on. And uh, the development or evolution of knowledge in terms of the vedas and the veda mantras and the vedic rituals it has taken place for more than 1 lakh years in over the yugas so we don't know exactly how long but not less than 1 lakh years because we have enough evidence to show there is a continuity of one lakh years or more so during which the huge amount of uh, knowledge which was developed which call the vedas or sanatana dharma we call it it has spread diffused all over the globe so this knowledge of the vedas comprised of two parts one is the karma kanda and other is the jnana kanda the karma kanda comprises of the yajnas yagas on which we will delve into some of the research aspects today and the jnana kanda comprises of the upanishads and the summary of the upanishads like brahma sutras and bhagavad gita so these uh, two aspects of the vedic knowledge the karma kanda and the jnana kanda is called karma and jnana of course bhakti is also there bhakti is uh, considered as part of karma only now the during this one lakh years there was extensive research performed on the various aspects of uh, universe nature and various aspects of nature are called devatas like uh, prithvi agni vayu the devatas can be either uh, physical or even abstract like knowledge medha intelligence 
knowledge is Saraswati, Vedha is intelligence, and various kinds of well being and wealth is Lakshmi. So, on all aspects of both physical and uh, it is grass and subtle, there was an extensive research done, and the word Veda itself means knowledge, with is to know. Veda is known form of the verb called with. So, knowledge of what? Knowledge of nature the powers of nature, the aspects of nature, which are each one is called a devata. So normally, in so-called religion, either Hinduism or other religions, people have only faith. So faith will be required only when you don't have the knowledge. If you have the true knowledge, there is no need to have faith. Or there is no mystery, or there is no blind belief. So those who don't have knowledge, they will end up in uh, talking of faith. So faith on the devatas, and that is how the religion of Hinduism was sort of born out of the masses having just faith and not knowledge. Whereas the rishis or the jnanis or the panditas or those who are educated they had this knowledge and uh, the forces of nature like Vayu, Agni, Prithvi, Indra all are actually windows to the one single supreme being which is Parabrahman or Om. So that is what is expressed in the Rigvedic, the famous Rigvedic quotation Egam Sat Vipra Bhavudhav what are those Bahudhas? In the same mantra, you mentioned the Indra, Mitram, Varanam, Matarishvam, Supernova, Garbhman, all these different devatas which are uh, theologized in the Vedas are only the windows and the ultimate truth is only one. Ekam Sat. Vipra Bahudha Vanat. Pandits. Vipra means uh, pandits or scholars. They will explain in different ways. So this is a famous quotation which is being quoted even today. Well, you may ask a question immediately whether all other devatas belonging to other religions are same as this Ekam Sat. Yes or no? Uh, the answer is yes to the extent of having the commonalities of uh, features. Like if you take Allah, the word Allah comes from Al Ilah. When you join Al and Ilah with Sandhi, it becomes Allah. Al means the, Atha. Atha in Sanskrit became Al in Arabic. And Ilah or Ilah or Ida, Ilah is the divine being. Like in Sanskrit, we have the word Ide, Agni Mide Prohitam. Ile means I pray. Praise worthy. Ila is praise worthy. So a divine personality, divine being. So the, the God, it, the word God is very loosely used in English. So divine, al means the divine being. Which means Ishwara, Parameshwara, Supreme Being, whatever name you give. And many of the differences in the Quran itself which describe the nature of the Supreme Being are exactly the same as we find in the Rig Veda itself or even in the Bhagavad Gita. Like being unborn, being the Supreme Being. So all this uh, unborn, undying, so various attributes. But they have also added uh, or diluted and distorted many other attributes in the same texts in different places to distort the original definitions and descriptions and made it personified. And in the case of Bible, same supreme being, which was known as Yahweh, 
was again distorted into a personality who played wrestling matches and who conceived uh, babies by sleeping with women. All kinds of uh, meaningless things were added later. So, if you remove those uh, distortions or disturbances or deviations in both Bible and Quran, the remaining description of uh, the Supreme Being as the creator, sustainer, or destroyer, and there are 99 names of Allah. They are all same as our Vishnu Sahasrama or our Vedic chanting or even in our Upanishads. So the answer whether those Supreme Beings and our Vedic Supreme Being, Ekam Sat, are one and the same, the answer is both yes and no. Yes to the extent of the original definitions, no to the extent of distortions and deviations in their own texts. So now the important point from the research angle is that this supreme being, which is the Brahman, the word Brahman comes from the root Brahat. Brahat means big. So that means the total totality, the universe, the nature, the environment, the totality, whatever you call it, that is the totality. And this totality is Brahman. And also known as Ishwara, <clears throat> in a specific context, Brahman or Parabrahman, transcendent Brahman, is Om. Om Chekakshram Brahma. So that Brahman can be viewed in lower denominations, lower and lower and lower. All of them become the windows to the Parabrahman. So like, for example, if you take a Devata, like Agni, Vayu, or uh, let's say Varuna, that is the liquids, or Prithvi, or even the mountains, the rivers, trees, or even parents, teacher, all these are Devatas, but they are all small, small parts, small windows. They are not just an independent part, but they are part and parcel of the Supreme Being, a window to the Supreme Being. So, Namaste Vayo Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahmasi. So, you are the, O oh Vayu, you are the Pratyaksha Brahma. You are, Pratyaksham is not to the eyes, but to the body. You are, we are able to sense Vayu. So, you are Brahman who is perceptible like this. There are statements, mantras. Similarly, if you take uh, any other devata, like if you take uh, Agni, Agni is energy principle. It is directly identified with the Parabrahman. Agni Mile, Varohitam, and so on. Or if you take uh, Varuna, Apa, Apo, Vishtha, Mayo, Bhagatara, Ujjedra, Kramahera, Nahashi, Shade, Yova, Shiva, Tamora, so the point I'm trying to drive, the research aspect I'm trying to drive to you is that these devatas of the Rigveda or the Ajipveda Karma Kandi are environmental forces. And the totality of all these environmental forces is the entire environment itself, which is the nature, Prakriti, Mola Prakriti, Ravyakta, Vyakta, Vyakta, Swarubhi. So, this is the research perspective of understanding the entire Vedic uh, framework. Not just Vedas, but the same thing continues in the Puranas and in Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita. Whatever framework the Vedas gave, same thing is explained in the Puranas and Itihasas. Itihasa Purana Piham Veda Mubha Brahmita is a statement you shall study and understand the Veda through the Puranas and the Itihasas. So this is the position taken by the traditional Sanatana Dharma. 
वेर एज द आर्य समाज डिस्मिस पुराणास and even itihas at the extent and upholds only the vedas and upanishads and bhagavad gita also and the brahma sutra so the the arya samaj uh, ideology uh, wants to disown dismiss and discount the puranas for their own reasons they have some reasons the reason is that first reason is that the puranas have been distorted modified extrapolated interpolated all kinds of things happened but that's not the case with vedas in the case of vedas 90% of vedas are lost but whatever remains remained intact there was no interference distortion interpolation extrapolation modification all kinds of error of any whereas in the case of puranas all these things have happened so originally whatever vyasa had they delivered has not been preserved as it is but it has been uh, modified uh, extended and uh, altered and etc etc in the process all kinds of things have been introduced even uh, uh, profane things have been introduced therefore the that is one of the reasons why the arya samaj uh, dismiss uh, validity of the puranas of course it need not be accepted by one and all the while what they say may be true but there is the remaining part that that has been true for uh, even other scriptures of other religions except for the vedas even in the case of mahabharata originally for 10000 shlokas it became 10 times multiplied became 100000 shlokas over a period of time Uh, different people like uh, Rova Harshana, Vaisampayala, they kept on expanding in their delivery of the Mahabharata. So the additional Upakhyanas which were added and added and added, the stories, 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 within the main story and second level story, third level story, fourth level story and so on, nested. Uh, so this kind of uh, literary exercise has happened over the centuries and millennia because our history is very long the vedas are uh, not less than 50000 years or even one lakh years whereas the mahabharata is supposed to be around 5000 years nobody knows exact date but roughly people estimate some people estimate 5000 some people estimate 7000 and so on ramayana is definitely before the mahabharata which is some people estimate 1 lakh 25000 some people estimate 7700 bc and so on we don't know exactly nobody can tell exactly but they are all guesstimates guesses and estimates so this is a historical research perspective there are people who are trying to redefine the historical perspective and uh, the british has uh, created a narrative which is uh, fake uh, but they felt it is genuine in their own interest and uh, they created the aryan invasion theory and uh, all kinds of bogus ideologies which are still continuing in some cases although they have been dis- uh, dismissed after a lot of research now the the other important thing is that the karmakanda yanakanda we have been delving deep into the upanishads and uh, bhagavad gita and bhagavad gita is nothing but the simplification of the upanishads so the karma kanda which has been referred in the bhagavad gita also but in a lower level but it is vedic trigunya vishaya veda nistrayunyo bhavarjana nirguno nischeva tattva so niryoga kshema atvar so the trigunas the sattva rajas tama trigunas are comprising nature prakriti and they are daivi hesha gunamayi mama maya duratya So he has mentioned in the Gita also this Daivi, Gunamayi, Prakriti, Maya, comprised of three Gunas, Traigunya Vishaya Veda, Nistraigunyo Bhava Arjuna, second chapter, O Arjuna, the Vedas comprised of the three Gunas. That means the manifest universe. <coughs> But for Moksha, you have to transcend the three Gunas, Nistraigunyo Bhava Arjuna. Arjuna, you go above the Trigunas. 
Nirguno Nitsasatrasto Niryoga Kshema Atmavan. If you are self realized Atmavan, you will be going to the level of Nirguna Nitsasatrasta. You are always in the Sattva because if the Parameshwara, Supreme Being Narayana, is Shuddha Sattva, is beyond even Sattva. Lowest is Tamas, Udil is Rajas, Ayan is Sattva, and Shuddha Sattva is the Supreme Being Narayana, Vishnu, or even Shiva, or under the same in different perspectives. Now, about Karmakanda, I will delve into the some of the aspects and uh, so demonstrate to you one technique called Agniyotra today. So a lot of research has been done on the Agniyotra aspect, though not all the Karmakandas. I will just mention uh, the different Karmakandas. We have broadly three types of Karmakandas. That is one is Srauta, Srauta, Smarta, and Horat. So, this Srauta means based on Sruti or the Veda proper. And Smarta means based on Smriti. Smriti means uh, Bhagavad Gita is a Smriti, Manusmriti is a Smriti. There are so many Smritis. And third is Pauranika, that is based on Puranas. So, the main distinction comes from the fact that. Pauranika karma, the bottommost, does not comprise the Agniyotra realization. Whereas the Srauta and Smarta both contain the Agniyotra. So, the, even in the Shodash Samskaras, our, which our sister, uh, great scholar Vishalakshmi, has been uh, deep into with you, they all have this Agniyotra in most cases, not all cases. Uh, wherever the Agniyotra is not uh, required uh, for particular classes of people, the Pauranika Karma can be done without the Agniyotra also. Like even the marriage, there is no Agniyotra in the Pauranika marriage. Whereas in the Srauta and Smarta, the, the Agniyotra is very much there. Fine. And uh, the other categorization, very important uh, objective categorization of the Srauta, Smarta, and Pauran Karma comes from the fact that the Srauta Yagas, there are Havid Yagas, 11 Havid Yagas, starting with Agnyotra, which I demonstrate today, then Vaishwadevam and Sovayagam and Akishtomam and Atiratram and uh, Chayanam and, uh, and so on, up to 11 such Haviriyaga, Vajapayam, Ashwamedham, and so on. So different, different uh, uh, Yagas and Yajas are performed. Uh, some are performed within two minutes, like I'll show you Agniyotra. Then we have the Atiratra, Vaishwadeva, Sovayaga. Sovayaga is performed for 10 days. And Chayanam is done for 40 days or something. And something else is a 30 day or whatever. So the Vedic scholars, the, whom you see around, that all the Vaidiki Brahmins, but even yogis were Vaidikis originally. 6,000 of them were turned into yogis by the word yoga means appointed, appointed as village officer. Before getting appointed, they were just uh, the Vaidikis only. So now the the Vaidika karma or Srauta karma is performed by the Vaidikis. In Andhra they are called Vaidiki Brahmins. In Karnataka they are called some other name. I think uh, some other names are there who the Brahmins who perform the Vaidika karmas. Uh, Agnihotri is another title name, those who perform Agnihotra. So by the performance of the Vedic rituals in a long-term basis, the environmental balance was being maintained. That is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita itself. 
Sahayajna Prajasushla Provacha Prajapati Kane and Prasavit Pavesha was Krishna Kama Duk Deva and Bhavayatani Vate Deva Bhavayan Parasparam Bhavayan Tasreya Paramavaps Natha. When Brahma created the universe, he created both human beings and the devas. Devas means forces of nature, environmental forces like Vayu, Bhakti, Varuna, and also certain forces like Vedha, Saraswati, Lakshmi, and so on. So, having created Sahayajna, Praja, Sushpa, Purvavacha, he created the Yajnas, Prajapati, Anena, Prasavit, Bhavesha, Vos, Krishna, Kavadu. Devan Bhavayata Nevate Deva Bhavayantaha Parasparam Bhavayantaha. You shall propitiate each other. Ishtan Bhoga Nivo Deva Dasyam Pe Yajna Bhavita. So those who, those humans, by performing the yajnas, they can propitiate the devatas. Ishtan Bhoga Nivo Deva Dasyam Pe Yajna Bhavita. So having been propitiated, the devatas will deliver or provide all the comforts, desires, and pleasures. Ishtan bhogan divo deva dasyante to the humans. Yajna bhavida, propitiated by the yajna process. Tair dattan pradaye bhiro yo bhunte steva eva saha. Humans who consume without returning back to the natural forces, nature, are thieves. Steva eva saha. They are performing theft. So if you don't replenish the environment and you go on consuming and depleting, the depletion of the environmental resources will result in environmental destruction, crisis, ecological destruction. And Therefore, the survival of human race, life on earth, will become a question mark. And it may be even extinguished like it has happened in other planets. So to protect the nature, to protect the environment, is the bound duty of humans. And yajna bhavita, that is performed through the yajna process. So that yajna process begins with the Agnihotra, which had today right on you and this entire Karmakanda was the main occupation of the Vaidiki Brahmin class out of which 6,000 were appointed as village officers, Karnam, revenue officers by the Sultan of Golconda, I think Tanisha or his predecessors. So that is how it became Arivel and Yoglu. Otherwise, they were all Vaitikis. So, uh, like they, in other states, there are names like Khota, Udgata. Now, in the Yajna, there are four actors. Advaryu is the Ajurveda scholar who, knows, who performs the Yajna or Yaga and the whole Advaryam. Then we have the Khota who performs the Kram, actual putting of the ghee. And Udgata is the person who sings loudly the Samagana, Samaveda. So, and Brahma. Brahma is the main chief priest, is from Rigveda. So, these four are the minimum requirements for performance of any yajna. So, in this yajna, yajna vidhi, the elaborate process, the whole of the Ajurveda is meant for. Explaining the Yajna Vidhi. It starts with the survey of the soil and land from sky and then identifying the proper land and then perform various soil tests and then performing the uh, building the Yajna Vedi and then various types of uh, Vedis are there, various shapes and then various types of Yajnas are performed for days together, months together to create the large impact on the environment. Just as an example, Soma Yoga, Soma Yaga is having a, a particular uh, event within it, which will produce a about 20 feet uh, flame. And that flame 
has been noticed to have uh, totally destroyed the COVID uh, uh, bacteria virus in uh, some time back. Uh, they performed it in uh, some places like Rajmandri and other places. So these hajjas have tremendous impact on the nature and all the devtas are evoked there addressed in loud mantras and ahutis are given. Somaya swaha, somaya idam namama, prajapate swaha, prajapate idam namama, surya swaha, surya idam namama, like this. Various uh, devatas, Agni, Vayu, Surya, Varuna, Prithvi, and so on. Indra is the ultimate uh, controller of all the natural forces. So, all this procedure, Yajna Vidhi, is given in the Ajurveda and the lab manuals of uh, giving the minute-to-minute uh, -minute instruction to the uh, actors in the Yajna. They are called the Brahmana Granthas. Uh, the word Brahmana means two different things. One is a Brahmana as a person, another is a text. So, Brahmana Granthas contain the operational procedures of the Ajnavidhis. So, only the Aranyakas start the philosophical discourses. The Upanishads are totally philosophical. They are the Jnanakanda. So, two parts, the Jnanakanda and the Karmakanda. Jnanakanda is the Aranyakas and Upanishads. Karmakanda is the uh, Samhita, which is sung. The Veda is chanted and uh, not just read. It is not to be read from a book. It has to be learned by chanting correctly. Sruti, that is why it is called Sruti. It is heard, not written. It is written. Uh, recently, it was uh, Max Muller printed for the first time. So there was never, there was any printing or writing of the Vedas. Only heard. And it was transmitted from generation to generation over the millennia, thousands and thousands of years by the private castes. And now of late, Arisam was brought the Veda and Yajna to the uh, public, uh, open public. Yeah. They have opened it up to all people and uh, in all castes and all classes and all houses and they will perform open to anybody and everybody. So this had both positive and negative positive effect is that the, uh, there was a Sudhi Karikrama on the Sardhananda of the Sardhananda's brought back many people who were converted into Muslims during the 19th century in Punjab India. And even now, they are also much back from Sudhi Karikram. And VHP, Vishwanda Parishad also started. But the negative impact is that the quality went down. So when you dilute uh, the entire thing to everybody and anybody, the quality can go down. It's not necessary, it should go down. And in the process, uh, there are certain process, but the fact that Ari Samaj remains as one of the integral parts of the Sanatana Dharma society today. Okay, now I will uh, show you the Agnihotra process. Uh, so basically you read this certain uh, ingredients. <coughs> this the uh, pedakal that is the cakes made up of cow dung. Dried cow dung cake. So you just have to make uh, three pieces. So I just made uh, one one piece for base and three pieces surrounding it. I think I turn the camera towards the. I okay, took the small base, then I kept uh, three pieces. Sorry. Uh, 
in a pyramid shape like this. And then uh, in between, I put a uh, part of a piece of gugula. It is a resin. It is a aromatic resin. It is like sambrani, but it is not sambrani. It is different from sambrani. Then I will also keep uh, akura, camphor. Then I'll go for the matchstick and did it. So once the flame is on, at exact time, sun, sunrise time today, I had to perform the ahudi. I will take uh, <coughs> a few grains of rice in uh, ghee and then I will <coughs> put into it Om Surya Yaswaha Surya Yaswaha Again, I will take a few grains of rice with ghee, cow ghee. Prajapate Swaha Prajapate Yandabama. So that is what is Agnihotra is all about. So now this uh, the flames which are coming out, they will be spread through the environment around your house and they will create a positive beneficial like you know the uh, all these uh, pests and cockroaches and other things will also be uh, controlled and uh, all good things will start happening with the flame burning like this and this is the Agnihotra process. And there are many other benefits uh, like uh, lungs will be purified and uh, <coughs> cholesterol will be reduced. Uh, the That Google has been uh, investigated to have reduced cholesterol And uh, apart from the environment, the body health condition can be improved drastically by practice of Agni Uttra. So you see, again, it is burning uh, very heavily and uh, smoke will spread everywhere. You can put the fan on if you want and the whole house will be purified. You can also keep it in a safe place where there will be no... <laughs> negative impact. So this is about the uh, Agnotra procedure. And now the Agnotra uh, outcomes, uh, extensive research has been done by the scholars, uh, not only in India, but also in uh, Germany, Poland, Australia, practice in a big way and they have found that the benefits are very large say if you do if you take that ash you know after five ten minutes it will be all ash that ash can be having medicinal properties if you spread uh, sprinkle it on uh, uh, crops they will give better yield <coughs> If you apply on your skin, it can remove the skin disorders. And uh, if you apply on your head, that is asma, that is vibhuti. That is nothing but the vibhuti of the Shiva. Vibhuti and bhuti raishwarya It will give you spiritual benefits. 
and uh, this the smoke contains organic acids we have done research uh, we have taken samples of the air before during and after the agniotra process in a sealed environment in sgs laboratories and we found that the oxygen levels went up instead of going down because the outcomes of organic acids like lutetic acid they interact with the pollutants in the air sulfur dioxide nitrous oxide carbon dioxide carbon monoxide and reduce them in the process the oxygen will be liberated so this study was done with the uh, neevi national environmental research institute in jointly with iict by me and myself and my friends and in addition to myself there are a large number of people kalna desh pandey of agniotra institute in akalkot or urlich from germany who lives in uh, Madhya Pradesh. There are people in the Poland, uh, all kinds of places. And particularly, the COVID time has been found very useful in dispelling the virus from the air. Okay, now uh, the research on Agniyotra has been very popular. There are many books written on it, many papers, are, hundreds of papers are there. We have a WhatsApp group. Our Ravi Prakash Arya, who gave the lecture on Vedas, is a key member of the WhatsApp group on Agniyotra research. And they have conducted many programs, I have given many lectures, so many others have given so many other lectures. Okay, now. Uh, the science and technology in the Sanskrit scriptures, the Vedas, the Shastras, not in the Kavyas. Kavyas do not contain Shastric content. Like Ramayana explains the existence of Pushpagamana, but does not give the details of design of Pushpagamana or construction. The other Shastras, Nirvan Shastra. Similarly, Ayurveda Shastra, there are a large number of books in Ayurveda pertaining to herbal medicine. You have attended the lectures. Then Yoga Shastra, then we have Loha Shastra, metallurgy, then we have the Nasa Shastra, that is Mercury technology. And so on, for hundreds and thousands of years, various branches of science and technology developed. And the yajna was related to the environmental science, the Vedas themselves, related to the environmental science. <laughs> so we have the Mantra Shastra, the Tantra Shastra, we have the Ayurveda Shastra, we have so on and so forth. Sangeeta Shastra, this is the uh, Gandharva Veda, which is Upaveda of Samaveda. And Ayurveda is Upaveda of the Rugveda. And we have the uh, also the, the signs of archery, Dhanurveda, Upaveda of Yajurveda, and Atharaveda, uh, and so on and so forth. So originally the Veda <coughs> contained the knowledge, but then later the Upavedas came. And then the Darshanas. Like Vaisyesh Kadarshan, I have already given one lecture, I think. I have written a book on the physics of Vaisyeshika. It is a physics. And uh, Yoga Darshan, of course, we have extensive coverage in the next one month, starting from there. And then from third. I think I have finished my oral presentation. Now we'll have an interview. Okay. Dhaniyavadam Nandi. So, we will have, uh, you know, this is the last class uh, in the first two months. So, we will have question answer session with the students. All the students who want to ask any question, uh, please. Uh, firstly, uh, what is told today, you concentrate on that. 
and uh, after that we, we can go you know any other topic. Sujit Kumar Garu, please unmute yourself. Uh, good morning, Prabhu sir. Yeah, good morning. Sir, in, in the in the yeah, yes, is there also a different word to be used for different kinds of uh, not clear? Please, sir. Oh. Clear the answer. Hello? Sujit Kumar Garu, your voice is not clear. Okay. Put it in the chat box. Uh, put it. Put your question in the chat box. We will take it up. No problem. Okay. Anybody else? Pantil Garu, unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, he has asked a question on Prarabdha Karma and Sanchita Karma and methods to overcome it. A very good question. The... <coughs> no, no, no. The different yagas, the question by Sujit is whether same wood is used in uh, for all yagas. No. Different different woods are used. Uh, Samidhas are usually the people tree or Moduga, so many, it is a highly sophisticated system. What wood should be used? What Sabida, which tree, which herb, which everything will be elaborately provided. And the pundits know that they will do according. You don't worry about it. They will bring the exact wood. Every yaga is different, every yajna is different. It does have different ingredients, different procedures, different aspects. Okay, now coming to the other question of uh, karma and uh, now you see the uh, my understanding is like this: uh, when you are born, uh, the moment uh, a child is born, that uh, particular uh, point of time, the position of the planetary mites, is mute your mites. So the planets are at particular uh, positions, angular position. The angular position of the planet is the indicated in the Kundali or horoscope. So according to Jyoti Shastra, which is one of the Vedangas, the, the, the position of the planets indicates the past karma and therefore the future. So, the karma of the individual when he died in the previous birth is reflected at the exact time of the birth. And at that exact time, the planet... Good your mic. Can you mute all mics, Babugaru, please? Yeah, it's mute, muted, muted. So the at the time of the birth, the position of angular position, that is 30 degrees, 70 degrees, like this, in 30, 60, 90, 120, like this, it goes on from right to left, like this, in the horoscope. So the position of the planets, or the grass, the word planet is not correct, grass, it indicates the karma. Because it indicates the time at which the birth took place, but it indicates the time at which death took place long back, based on the karma of the past life. So the past life karma is reflected in the horoscope, in the position of the grahas. So that is at the time of birth. But then the grahas are moving, planets are moving. So that is, uh, we have the grahacharam. So the according to the movement of the grahas, the changes will take place 
all the aspects of life, birth and death and longevity. And the, like Patanjali has two sutras. Karma is of two types. Punya karma and apunya karma. Punya karma will lead to ahlada, pleasure, happiness, comfort, sukha. And uh, apunya karma will lead to parita, suffering, pain, misery. So, tehlada parita vakala, punya punya hetu twat. Then the other sutra is sati mole tad vipake jat yayur bhoga. So, the karma vipaka, the complete uh, fruit, fruition of the karma will result in birth, jati, ayu, long, longevity of living, and bhoga. What kind of enjoyment or suffering you will have in the life. So this is all determined by your own karma, all the prarabdha karma and sanchita karma, which is reflected in the horoscope. Now the particular combination of the planets will indicate to the Jyotish Daivanyas what is going to be the future. That is the horoscope reading predictions. Lagasa gave the first uh, mechanisms of forecasting or predictions. And of course, they may not be 100% accurate. The accuracy depends upon the, uh, the person who is calculating the results, his knowledge and his expertise and so on. So by the performance of Punya Karma, the Positive credit will be increased. The Agniyotra, Yajna, Yaga, all these are Punya Karmas. And uh, performing Papa Karma, like uh, what is Papa is uh, tormenting others. Parvapakara, Punyaya, Papaya, Parapidara. If you are able to help others, give some benefit to others, and others bless you, they are thankful, grateful, they are benefited, that will be adding to your Punya. That is credit. But if you perform the tormentation, pedana, of others, they can be your parents or they can be your family members, wife, children, brothers, sisters, or even organizational colleagues or subordinates or even outsiders. If you torment them, if you peda, if you paripeda, if you give the parita, it is said backlash to you will be your own suffering, paritapa. So, Paropakara Punyaya, Papaya, Parapidal. That is the basic uh, definition of Punya and Papa. But then we have so many other Punya Karmas like uh, Tirtha Yatra, Yajna Yaga, Japa, Homa, Pranayama, Asa, Yoga, Vyasa, Tapas, uh, Puja, Daiva Archana, Devata Archana, Jaya, so many Punya Karmas. All of them result in Punya in different, different ways and different, different levels. So, if you increase your Punya Karma, your future, either in this life or next life, you will be more uh, positive, it will be more happy and all that. So that the, all these Yajna Yagas, Kathus are meant for the Punya Karma. Of course, there are specific uh, uh, Parihara Karmas also. So again, Karmas can be divided into three types. That is, uh, uh, as I told you, Srauta, Smartha and Pauranika. All the Karmas can be either Srauta Karmas or Smartha Karmas. Smartha Karmas means uh, uh, Rudra Yagam, Lakshmi Homam, or the Chandi Homam, all these things are smart karmas. And Paurani karmas are not having a new in it. Like Sachnarayana Vratam, Varalakshmi Vratam, all these are called the Paurani karmas. So all the three types of karmas are there. But apart from that, Shantika Paushta Vichari, three types of karmas are there. Shantika means to calm down the uh, Severity of the papaka. That is, somebody is having some problem, some financial problem, some educational problem, whatever problem. So, to reduce that problem, shantika, shanti karmas are performed. And paushtika, like how to give pushti, strength, say babies, then. So how to make the baby strong, or how to make a patient strong, a weak person strong. Or how to make a, a warrior strong, king strong. So, Paushtika Karmas. Then we have the Abhicharika Karmas, which are the Tantric Karmas against the enemies in the war. They are, uh, uh, they are having five types of, uh, uh, that is Mohana, Vasikarana, Uchatana, and Marana. Marana is killing without touching. 
and uh, vashikarana you know what it is and uchatana is driving them away from somewhere bhedana and uchatana and then mohana is vashikarana so stambhana is also there. so all these are the tantric karmas which are called abhicharika karmas which are uh, invasive or which are uh, war type so shantika paushtika abhicharika karmas are all available in the vaidika karma repository and the experts will tell you if you approach a proper uh, brahmin scholar pandit vedic pandit he will tell you what is to be done for what purpose or uh, if i want to get a, a, a male child what i should do if i want to get a, a lot of money what i should do if i want to get a lot of knowledge what i should do for example knowledge If somebody is doing phd it's very difficult thing to complete phd it's very difficult so how to complete it there are saraswati upasana is available either the person himself or his close relatives they have, they can perform saraswati upasana there are mantras for saraswati there are mantras for higher level research level knowledge maha saraswati saraswata prade so those mantras if you perform the japa homa in every upasana they will have japa and then homa then we have tarpana then we have brahmana bhoja all the four are there in one is to 10 ratio so if it is performed correctly it will give results so the astrologer will tell you looking at the horoscope which uh, graha is uh, causing what problem because we have basically two types of grahas the shubha grahas and the ashubha grahas ashubha grahas are like rahu ketu uh, shani so these and also puja to some extent so these uh, ashubha grahas will be giving bad results naturally they are have their malevolent and the shubha grahas like guru shukra they will always give positive results but depending on the position in which they are there when you are born if the guru is in a particular position then it will give you sort of result and like in my own case i had the situation of uh, guru and shukra together in the ninth place therefore i could become the direct general then um, somebody also told since i have ketu and, and guru i think i am not sure where so then i will not have next life no birth so vedanta jnan ketu gives vedanta jnan though he is a ashubha graha in particular conditions it will give vedanta jnan when you have vedanta jnanam then you have no next life you are liberated so it is all indicated in the and similarly the behavior of the person also will be indicated some people uh, like those who are born in a particular year a uh, particular position of the guru being low low end icha they will behave in a obnoxious manner they will behave abnormally otherwise they will be okay in all other times so like this different different uh, traits are there but it's a very dicey don't i want to warn caution all of you that you cannot believe astrology 100% because it varies from person to person's interpretation and also the lack of accuracy of calculations and lack of accuracy of birth also for example when you take uh, the vastu shastra you have attended classes the vastu shastra is meant only for independent houses it is not meant for apartments it is meaningless because in apartments uh, we are cramping uh, like a match box and uh, the, the, i'll tell you a very funny situation the east facing apartments cannot get sunlight can you believe this because the west facing apartment is in front of it only west facing will get sunlight in sunrise time like my, recently when a baby was born it was required to expose to rising sunlight ultraviolet light and they purchased an apartment which is east facing good and all that but then there's no sunlight sunlight will come only in the, in the west in the evening is they don't want they want only morning sun then west facing is getting morning sun the purpose of east facing house independent house is that sunlight will come in the morning that is purpose itself is defeated opposite is happening in the case of apartment so similarly the like vastu is not applicable for apartments but is applicable only for independent houses similarly uh, even other things they are not applicable uh, many things are not applicable in kali yuga 
like uh, some uh, karmas are not applicable in kali yuga vidhi yoga or even some people say even putra kama shri will is not applicable in kali yuga and so on and so forth so there are very complicated situations so even in astrology like uh, if you perform uh, certain rituals some of them are not permitted in kali yuga and some of them will not work and of course uh, you require a very expert brahmin priest to perform otherwise you will not have any result so i have performed certain rituals and i got certain results the agnyotra is the simplest of all anybody can perform okay next okay pantul garu guru bhyo namaha guru garu this nitya agnyotra or nitya atyohom can be done anybody yeah. without the you know, guidance or uh, upadesha from guru no 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 you have to take, you have to learn it properly i, I showed today uh, very broadly but i don't think you'll be able to repeat exactly so you have to learn correctly it's not difficult actually what i showed today is a simplified version it takes only 2 minutes the original version is taking 20 minutes that is called avposara if you call a brahmin priest to your house for any purpose he will perform from agni karyam you remember he will open the he will lit the fire and he will perform atena manya swarva atena manya swada you remember uh, so that agni karyam is the avposara that is the original version 20 minutes it will take so we have removed all the things in it and made only two mantras that i did i did not do this uh, gajanan maharaj has done it and he established an agnihotra uh, uh, program process which has propagated all over the world so that it will be popularized in 2 minutes the main mantras are taken at times if it is in the morning it is surya swaha surya idan namama prajapate swaha prajapate idan if it is evening is agna swaha agna idan namama prajapate swaha prajapate idan namama these so are the heart mantras of the entire avposana karma which is about 20 minutes you have to go through the proper process you have to learn it and other yajnas are very very complicated so of the vaishvadeva is the next which can be done regularly and uh, then we have uh, soma yagam and all those things which are uh, big big uh, karma then one more Each. question sir uh, yeah. salas so one more question sir hmm. salas so one more question please go ahead yes sir This is a Homa, uh, Yajnamu, Yagamu. What is the difference in it? Are there any difference between uh, Rukveda and Ejurveda? Whether in uh, procedural and mantras? No, no, you are getting confused. Don't think in those lines. Uh, uh, I'll explain in the overall perspective. Rukveda is not for Yajnas. It is for basic mantras, Ruks. They are called Vichas. And Yajna is explained in the Ejurveda only. not in samaveda or adurveda or rigveda that's first point so yajurveda explains all yaj, the word yaju itself shows it is for yajna purpose sama means singing musicology adurveda is different it is related to treatments medical treatments and tantric rituals and so on so rigveda is basic science which is comprising the description in terms of praises of various devatas so in the yajna they chant the rigveda mantras for addressing various devatas to propitiate them through the havanam so the homa is done by hota and uh, uh, the samagana is uh, sung by the udgata who is the samaveda expert and the hota is adharveda expert i think and rigveda is the brahma and ajurveda is adharyu so they will be having different roles different activities in the yajna is a very complex and overhead process you can go and witness any yajna so it is not veda by all all vedas are there in all yajnas it is a procedure which is dif- described for different yajnas and uh, then you see the uh, homa is a general word uh, for the havanam the word homa comes from havanam that is to put the ahuti to the fire and uh, yajnas is again a general word and yaga is specific 
There are uh, 11 Havir Yagas in the Vedas. Where Havis are given, starting with Agniyotra. Havis means what I have put with cow ghee and uh, rice follicles mix. And also sometimes cow ghee is put directly in the two, two different instruments. <coughs> so please mute your mics. And uh, so uh, it is a very uh, elaborate, complex process. You have to learn correctly. And of course, this is simplest. Agniyotra is simplest. Next question. Please mute Thank all you. your mics. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, Bapaji. Mm, good. Oscar, sir. Oscar. Okay, ask me a question. I have two, uh, two, three questions, small, small. First mm -hmm. question is that you are telling that the bar. Bar's time is the important for our to decide our previous karma and our future fate also. In that sense, in all over India, for a particular moment, so many childs are born. In that case, how it is being treated in India one kind, in foreign other ways. Because the countries which are having money quite uh, solvent and economically developed, their all changes are being guided by their gov government. Whereas in India, at the same time, in footpath as well as in a breach house, born same time, all the child, but their fate are different. How it is happened? And whether this rule is applicable all over India or no, only for India? No, no, no. Anyway, it's it, uh... This, uh, the fact, in fact, uh, there are more uh, cases outside India of uh, children remembering past lives. So, there are many cases uh, which are recorded in investigations. Every child will remember the past life inside the home. And once born, uh, he'll start forgetting slowly. You remember uh, some babies will be laughing and uh, smiling, uh, closing their eyes. Baby newly born, what experiences they are there to remember and smile? Is the past experiences which are being shown like a movie to that baby. So the past life is confirmed uh, to various researchers abroad. So there is one uh, University of Maryland, one Robinson is there. He has done extensive research. And now there are uh, regular treatments available in America by the psychiatrist on what is called the past life regression therapy. They will take you back by hypnotism to your past lives. So don't have such uh, doubts. It is a very vast subject. Now the, uh, the question of timing, you see uh, the past karma will uh, result in the present birth. So if you want to have a final proof of uh, past life, Ingracharya of Kanchi once was asked and he just gave, gave an address and asked that man to go there to get the proof. And that address was nothing but the maternity hospital. So in the maternity hospital, just now you told the different children are born at different uh, same time in different circumstances. So that is the effect. Your answer is in, inside your question. Same time, different children are born throughout the globe, but all born in different, different circumstances. And they are going to enjoy or suffer different, different life. Why? That itself is a proof that there was a past life. The result of the karmas of the past life has been the background cause for the present. So you have to think deeply. Don't get carried away with superficial questions. The next question. Uh, in that case, uh, we, uh, we are the human. It is the, it is the result of evolution from amoeba stage. So under this circumstance, whether human being only get punar uh, janma or animal also. No, all. Everybody gets. In that case, 
next life human being become animal and animal become human being yes that depends on the karma in the puranas uh, they are they have explained who will be born as animal acha most acha one so particular two... one particular <coughs> jug is completed another jug is started now kali jug is started whether a particular jug no, no nothing to do with nothing to do with yugas the... no no uh, it is my next question just the last question in every jug whether is started after the end of another jug whether all human being is died uh, after the death of all human no, being no. <laughs> you are being very wild in your thinking don't think all this uh... anomalous and uh, wild thoughts just listen carefully the subject is much deeper than what you are thinking it is now the yugas there, there is no drastic change between the two yugas it's a continuous process like if you take between dwapara and kali the mahabharata war took place and the end of dwapara yuga and kali yuga just started after that the moment uh, lord krishna left this world kali yuga started parikshit and all that story you know there was no disruption except the war about the war similarly if you take uh, between treta yuga and dwapara yuga there was no such drastic disruption it's a continuous process the mahapralaya is the only disruption which will happen at the kalpanta that is different not between yugas that's it. is that clear now after kali yuga the... you will come after kali yuga after kali present kali yuga Satya Yuga will come only when the Kalpanta Kalpa is a bigger interval. The, when the Brahma Kalpa is completed, Brahma's day, which is something like forty four billion years or some such thing, I'm not very very four lakh thirty two thousand and multiplications and so on. You have to learn the subject deeply. The, the uh, Jyoti Shastra. If you take any Panchang, it will be written on the front page cover. How many years have passed in the present creation? Something like two billion will be written there. One point nine nine some billion, billion, not million. So only at that some two billion years or four billion years, there will be complete destruction and restart. Like you know, you shut down and restart. But till then, various yugas will come and go, come and go, come and go continuously. The changes will be slow and steady. that's all now coming to the animals and the humans and uh, trees and so on the evolution is a continuous process there are 84 lakhs of living beings so there is a continuous evolution going on evolution exists but not like darwin like man came from monkeys all bogus monkeys are also there man is also there both are evolving so now the point is that the, the humans once reached human life after A large number of evolution in the past, from the amoeba onwards, you have reached human being level. Now today, if you die, it is very very remote chance that you will go back to animal life, let alone amoeba life. But people do go. Uh, some people who committed uh, heinous crimes, they will be born in different different animal births, and that list is available for your reference in Garuda Puran. Please don't read it now. We read it only when somebody dies. uh so they have given who, who will be born as dog cat or snake or cockroach and everything for what con- conducting what kind of committing what kind of crimes in this present life as human mostly it will be born as human again but when you are born as human again it is not necessary you will be born in a better place you may be born in a worse place or a better place depending on your karma If you are a yoga prashta who has performed the yoga abhyasa in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, has given, you have gone far ahead, but you have not reached the final stage. But you died before you reached final stage. You will be born again. Shuchi Ram Sri Matam Gehe Yoga Prashto Abhijayate. You will be born again among the so pure family members, pure uh, and uh, well, well to well being, uh, well well living. so you will be again continuing your uh, sadhana at that point but i i think i have touched up on all the issues and they, if you ask a final question we shouldn't ask i am telling you the fourth question we shouldn't ask how can the total 
numbers be same now because in the kaliuga modern times the human population is exploding whereas in dwapariga trinaga very few humans so uh, we also know that as human population explodes the tree and animal population decreases it is happening that is the environmental destruction so it is a balance total balance total environmental balance increase decrease you know it is a continuous process from time to time okay next question okay kalyan Uh, Mahoday, good morning. Uh, sir, uh, I need uh, more information about that uh, Agni uh, homeum. Okay, right now we were used only for Modiga Pulla for homeum. Is there any reason behind on that, sir? Why we need to use only Modiga in the homeum? Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Prabhugar, uh, unmute yourself. No, it does not come. Unmute chess call. Prabhugar Mir, unmute chess call. Okay, just a minute. Ah, okay, one minute. I will try and unmute. Where is it? Um, I think he has. Okay, one minute. Okay, unmute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, how's it? Yeah, no, no. Different, different uh, trees are used. To, not only Modiga, but people also is used. And uh, depending on the karma, like in, for example, Mahalakshmi uh, Yagam, they'll uh, perform Havanam of lotus flowers. Okay. So it all depends on the case. Different, different trees, different, different uh, materials are used. Homa Dravyas are also used. This Gugulam is, uh, is one of the resins uh, which we use and we are also using camphor. Yes, next question. I think now we have completed uh, both chat questions and also uh, people who want to ask them. Uh, thank you so okay. much, sir. And uh, here uh, we are left with now yoga classes for next one month. All are requested to come, all are required to come and attend yoga classes. Uh, for the uh, last two months, we are going to have exam tomorrow, sir. And at 6 30. When is the when is our yoga course starting? Monday onwards. That is Monday. Uh, that means fourth. Uh, fourth. Fourth, not third. Yeah. Third is third, uh, third is that youth course in the evening. Yeah. That is inaugural. Okay. Okay. So, friends, uh, I look forward to interact with you and practice yoga practice sessions. It will be all practical standing, sitting, various asanas, various exercises, various breathing techniques, pranayama, etc. We'll from uh, fourth on Monday. Bye. Thank you. And also, I think we'll have you know, yoga uh, sastram also, uh, some lectures. After a practicals. Okay, now let us go for uh, Pradhana. Chavali Salashwaru. Om Swaste Prajabhya Paripa Layantam Nyayena Margena Mahi Mahi Go Brahmane Bhya Shubhamastu Nityam Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Parjanyaha Prithvi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Kshova Rahitaha Brahmana Santu Nirbhayaha Aputra Putrena Santu Putrena Santu Pautrenaha Adhana Sadhana Santu Jeevan Tusharadam Shatam Satyam Vada Dharmam Chara Swadhya Yanma Pramadaha Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Maka Shiddukha Bhavet 
ओम शांति 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 ही ओम पूर्ण मद पूर्ण मिदम पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमाताय पूर्णमेवशिष्य शांति 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 सर्वे जन सुखिनो भवन्तु स्वस्ति धन्यवाद Allah, let us all stand up and then uh, recite national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe bharata bhagya vidhata Punjab sindhu gujarat maratha dravida utkala banga Vindya himachala yamuna ganga उच्छल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाथा जनगण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे धन्यवाद चला चिटीपाब गावल विशालाक्षी गारे